it sounds like some of you have either thought about writing a book or you're on on the way to doing that. Where where are we at? Are, are some of you uh, uh, thinking about doing it and haven't started yet? What, what, what are your goals here? I have an outline uh, myself, uh, Joseph is speaking. Uh, Good. I have an outline of an idea. Good. Good. Yeah. Anybody else? I have a rough draft. Okay. I know someone else here has written a Mary book. Mary Linder has got her hand up. <clears throat> yeah. Thoughts about writing, have an idea, started ebooks. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. Well, I will tell you the New York Times published an article a, a number of years ago where they said that 81% of people have thought about writing a book but haven't done it. That's a lot of people who have this as a dream or a bucket list item, but a lot of people just have never gotten around to it. So first of all, why, why is that? Well, I can think of three very good reasons why people have not written their books yet. Number one, they don't think they're a good enough writer. And I would say you don't have to be a great writer. In fact, Robert Kiyosaki very famously calls himself a best-selling author and not a best writing author. So some people source that out. If you think about the most visible people in the world, whether they are in politics, music, or celebrities of some other kind, a lot of them don't take the time to type on their keyboards because it can take a while to do a book, especially if it's more of a memoir kind of thing, because that's a lot of history to go back through and figure out what your stories are going to be. So you don't have to be a great writer because even if you do decide to write it out, even if you decide to come up with your outline and talk into a recording, you can hire someone to edit the mess that you've created and to make it good. So there's always that help. You don't have to be the one to actually write the book. The second reason why people typically don't write their books is because they really question whether they have anything that someone wants to read. I don't know if I have anything to say. I don't know if someone will read what I've written. And maybe that fear or concern has crossed some of your minds. But I do want to say that all of us are good at something. All of us have an expertise at something. Even if only one person is impact impacted by your work, it's it's worth it. And depending on your topic, maybe your your topic is about overcoming something traumatic. If you could help one person overcome the same situation that you went through, it's absolutely worth your time. So I promise that you have something to say. Maybe you haven't spoken to someone who's able to dig that out of you and help you. In fact, a lot of people will do a book, something related to their business. I, I have a client who runs a home services industry. And at first we were going to talk about how to fix basic plumbing issues in the house. But then we realized you can look a lot of that stuff up on YouTube if you want to see a, a tutorial about that. And he questioned whether that would be interesting enough. And so he flipped the script and decided to do more of a core values kind of book. Basically, this is who I am and this is what you'll expect when you work with me. And if you think about it, if you are competing with other people for business and you are the only person that they're talking to that has written a book, they automatically think that you're the authority and rightfully so. So there are a lot of good reasons to do it. And the other reason why people don't write their books is because they don't think they have time. Well, we can all make time for something that we think is really important to us for sure. Even if you wrote two pages a day, you can be done in a few months. Time's going to pass whether you write your book or not. So write your book. And again, you can also source it out to someone who actually has more time if that's something that you want to do. So I do think that there are many, many reasons why you should write a book. I'm a little biased because that's what I help people do. But there are a lot of reasons why you should write a book. Number one, it does fulfill a bucket list item like I alluded to. Another reason is that you can use it as a lead generation tool in your business. Sometimes people will write a short book to give away to people as a value add to give people an idea of what they can expect when they work with you. It might be, you know, 10 ways to, and then whatever it is that you want to write about, but you'll, you'll give the what, and you'll give the why, but if you want to give the how they should probably hire you. So that might be a guideline for you. Another reason why you should write a book, because there's a higher perceived credibility in the marketplace for you. And like I said, if you were competing with others in your space and you were the only author, guess who has the credibility? Guess who they'll probably 
higher because you must know what you're doing if you've written a book. Another reason to write a book is because it gives you material to repurpose. You can create courses around your content. You can repurpose content from your book into magazine articles. You can do Facebook Lives. You can do speaking engagements. You can create a coaching program. You can go on radio shows. And I'll talk about some of that a little bit later. So if you've made a decision to write a book, you may be wondering, well, how do I get started? Well, there are three things that I think you need. Number one, you should have a very clear message. What purpose do you have for writing the book? What impact do you want to create? What should people take away from your book after they have read it? What do you want people to think, do, believe, act about your topic? What do you want to move people toward? Number two, know what your audience wants. And I think the perfect topic for you and your book is the intersection of three things. Number one, what do you know a lot about? Number two, what does your audience want to know more about? And number three, what will your audience pay for? Because you want people to buy your book. And hopefully you want people to continue their journey with you after your book is written. And if, if you are taking notes, I'll say those three things again. The perfect intersection for your topic is what do you know a lot about? What does your audience want to know more about? And what will your audience pay for? So if you are writing a book, there needs to be an end game in mind. I talk to people who say, well, I just want to tell my story. Okay, great. And what do you mean? And well, what do you want people to do when they're done reading your book? I just want to share my story. Okay, that's fine. But what will your call to action be? If we're entrepreneurs and all of us here are, you want to lead people towards something. I did reference Robert Kiyosaki earlier, Think and Grow Rich or not thinking grow rich, that's Napoleon Hill. I'm Rich Dad, Poor Dad, excuse me. If you've read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you know that he is leading you throughout the book to buy his cash flow game. That's his call to action. If you've read Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Eker, you know that his end game is to get you to go to his weekend event for free. Now, why does he offer it for free? Because he plans on selling a bunch of courses and mastermind programs at the event. And if you've ever been to one of his events, great content, but they are pretty intense about selling their programs. So they make more than enough money on the back end to make coming to the event free. But the book is the magnet. You buy the book, you read, you get a lot of great content out of it, but he wants you to come to his event. His team wants you to come to his event. So great. So what is your call to action? So those are the three things that you need to start. So once you figured out those things, how do you actually get started? Well, if you haven't picked your topic yet, I would say ask people that you trust, what do you expect me to write about? Because the answers might surprise you. So think about this. What do people compliment you on all the time? What do people say about you? How did you do that? How did you get a deal that big? How did you find that many people to come to your open house? How did you recruit that many agents in just 30 days? Those might be things that you want to write about. If people are constantly asking you, how did you do that? That might be a great topic. In terms of formatting your book, you might want to do a question and answer format. This could be the basis for chapters. So let's just say, for example, you are selling commercial property, which I'm guessing all of you do. You frequently encounter people who've never bought a commercial property before. So what are the questions people ask you all the time? The questions you get tired of answering. That's another good reason to write a book. If someone asks you all the same questions over and over again, you can just say, read my book. Here it is. <laughs> and let's talk again after you've had a chance to prove some of the material because now their questions can be more specific because people who are coming to you don't know what they don't know yet. So what are the questions that people ask you all the time? Write down those questions, and then the answers to those questions might be the four, uh, basis for chapters for your book. Another thing you can do is think about all the stories that you want to tell. So the stories aren't the driving point for your book. The stories support the ideas you want to share. So if someone is asking you a certain question over and over again, and you've decided that's chapter one, your answer to that question can include stories from clients about that particular aspect of, of what you do. So telling stories is a great way to fill out your content. Now you can, you can type it out. You can speak into a recorded line. You can get it transcribed. You can edit it. So I've talked about that a little bit already. So where do I find content for my book? 
a lot of people will have content from their personal experiences because you've you've been out in the field for a while. But something else you can do is if you have a Facebook group, you can ask questions to your group and have people share their experiences with your topic. For example, I had a coaching client who wanted to talk about resilience and overcoming terrible situations in her life. But her concern was, do I have enough content for my book? She mentioned during one of our coaching sessions that she had two Facebook groups. And I said, there's your ticket right there. Ask people in your group to share their overcoming stories. And they did. And she had 25 stories from other people to share. Now she didn't have to come up with all the content herself. And most of that content was, I overcame a divorce. I lost my business. I, my husband died. My wife died. My child died. I went bankrupt. Those are all horrible situations that had to be overcome, but they all shared their stories about that and some of the strategies that they used to overcome that. And so those were parts of her book. Those were stories that she shared in her book. I talked about your life experiences. For example, I did a book called The Grace Lessons I Learned From My Dad after my dad passed. I wanted to honor him. And so I had some lessons, but I wanted to ask other people what lessons they may have from their dad. And so I asked people to chip in chapters and there was a small financial investment for that to help me pay for you know putting the book together and marketing and such, but they all happily chipped in. And I had 28 people, I think, share their chapters. And it turned out to be a really great book, The Greatest Lessons I Learned From My Dad. And of course, after I did that, I had to do a Greatest Lessons I Learned From My Mom. She's still with me, so she is enjoying it. So those are just some ideas. Life experiences can generate some ideas for topics. Where else can you find content for your book? Look to things that you've written or created already. Maybe you've written magazine articles. Maybe you write for Forbes Council. Maybe you've contributed to online magazines in the past. You can repurpose some of that into a book. Maybe blog posts. Maybe you've written a blog. Jeffrey Gittimer, when I interviewed him on my show, Success Profiles Radio, has a blog. And when I asked him, because he's written a lot of books, when I asked him, how did you decide to write a book? He says, I never really decided to write a book. I just made a blog about all the stupid things that salespeople do. And after a hundred entries, I realized, huh, I guess I have a book. And that was his first book. So that might be something you can do. If you've done a bunch of Facebook lives about a similar topic, that might be content for a book. In fact, one of my book, book writing clients did a bunch of Facebook lives about how to run and scale your business and streamline it. So we repurposed her Facebook lives and then I interviewed her to fill out some of the details because her Facebook lives are only seven to 10 minutes. So I wanted to fill out the chapter with some more ideas and some more contents. And so the Facebook lives were the starting point for her content. Maybe you've created an online course. In fact, one of my clients who helps people use LinkedIn to generate leads and sales has a course about how to help network marketers create and generate leads on LinkedIn. So we turned his course into a book, which then he used as a call to action to buy his course. So he was attracting people that were not currently in his universe, but we used the course to create content for the book. And then we redirected people back to his course to get new clients. So that was really awesome. Sometimes if you've done a bunch of Facebook posts or LinkedIn posts about a similar topic, maybe you can compile some of those into a book. Maybe you can find content for your book by being inspired by what other people have written. Maybe if you're inspired by a current event, something that happened that you agree with or don't agree with, that might be the basis for something you can write about. It might trigger something similar for you, and that can be a great starting place as well. So let's say that you've now written a book. I want to talk very briefly about 10 ways that you can repurpose your book content to keep the conversation going. And I've mentioned some of these before. Number one, you can do Facebook Lives. Now I talked about using Facebook Lives that you maybe have already done as content for your book. But what I've done is I've used Facebook Lives to promote my book. In fact, I have a book called Success Profiles Conversations with High Achievers. And I have actually two volumes of that book. I used interviews from my radio show as the basis for that book, I've interviewed a lot of really high achievers on my radio show. And so I pulled some of the best ones and compiled that into a book. I wrote an intro chapter. And after I was done, I did Facebook Lives for a month. I would do a five to seven minute Facebook Live 
on day one about one idea in chapter one. And then on day two, I would pick one idea from chapter two. On day three, I would pick one idea from chapter three until I was done. There were 11 chapters. And then I started over and picked a different idea from chapter one and then a different idea from chapter two. I did this for a month. I could have gone on much longer, but it kept the conversation going because when you are promoting a book, people may not see your post about it on day one. In fact, it might be a whole week later because of social media's algorithms. They may not see your post until a week later. Oh my gosh, how come I didn't see this? Of course, I'll buy your book. So sales will happen for a number of days afterwards. Another way to repurpose your content in, in addition to Facebook Lives is just doing social media posts. If you don't want to go live, just write about something in one of your chapters. And then the next day, write something else about one of your chapters. So keep the conversation alive. Number three, you can make memes about your content. Sometimes what I will do is I will have my assistant mock up a meme which has my photo along with a photo of the front cover of the book. And then the content, the, the verbiage on the meme is what chapter one's title is. And that's enough to create a meme, you know, create memes for a couple of weeks. But you can make memes about your content. People love memes. People love to laugh at memes. People love to be informed by memes. So creating memes can be a really great idea. Number four way you can repurpose your book content is to create a Facebook group about that area of expertise and invite people to join your book. And so the conversation is always about that topic, whether you make the posts or whether you allow other people to make the posts, but it keeps ideas going about that topic. And then of course you can pin post, pin a post about the main thing that people see when they join your group. Number five, you can write magazine articles. In fact, what I do with my book writing clients is if I need to fill more space in my magazine, which is called Ultimate Achievers Magazine, I publish it every month, I will repurpose chapters, standalone chapters from that client's book as a magazine article. And there's one client I did that with almost every single chapter in his book because it was such a great book that uh, it was it was content that I could reuse and it kept the conversation about his book going for a long, long time. Number six, podcast episodes, whether you are the host or whether you are the guest. Sometimes what I will do on my show is after I've released a book, I will make the next show all about topics from the book. And if I had people contribute to the book, I will invite people to call in to share what they talked about in the book. And so it allows not just my audience, but their audience to join me. So as a host, it's a great idea. As a guest, if you are invited to talk about your topic, like you all just invited me to come talk about my topic, it's a great way to con uh, repurpose content from your book. Number seven, you can go on television. I was on a, a show called The List. I don't think it's on anymore, but it was on for five seasons. And I talked about the three things that you need to know to write a book. And that's something I talked about a little bit ago. But that was a television segment that was about two hours or two, not two hours, two minutes and 15 seconds. And so that was a 30 minute show. They would have four segments on every show. And I got to be on national television. In fact, the first interview that I ever did was a national spot, which was really cool. Number eight, you can speak on stage, whether it's live or virtual. You can be invited to speak on someone's stage or number nine, you can create your own stage. If people aren't inviting you to come on their stage, then create your own event. That way you have a chance to control the agenda, which is a really great thing. And number 10, you can create a coaching group. In fact, I was in a high level mastermind one time and there was a lady who had a coaching program about quilting and she said she made a quarter million dollars a year. Quilting, you can, you can monetize anything. I was in another mastermind one time where one lady talked about her seven figure dog sledding group. Who knew she makes a million dollars a year coaching people on dog sledding, how to do it, how to create a business around it. it. It just blew my mind, but you can monetize anything. So create a coaching group. So those are some ways that you can repurpose content from your book when you're done. So let's talk about ways that you can, you know, promote your book. I've talked about some of these before you can, you know, create uh posts on social media, you can create a, a list of media that you want to be on. Maybe there are some podcasts, maybe some of your friends have podcasts and you can ask them to be on, you can ask to be on their show. Something else you can do is a press release. I get my press releases done by a professional because I 
don't do it very often. The first time I did this, my press release got picked up by over 200 outlets. I got zero responses because I failed to, to follow up on any of them. And I didn't know you really could do that. But you can have a press release and start contacting the people that picked up your release and just ask, hey, would you like me to available be available for a story about this since you picked it up? You can get some press that way. Another thing you can do is have a book release party and invite people and they will buy your book at your party if they haven't already. And sometimes when I have a book release party, people will buy the book and they'll just bring it to have me sign it, which is great because now I know that people actually bought my book and that makes me happy. So have a book release party. Another thing you can do is do book signings. Uh, I lived in Arizona for quite a while. And when I released the Conversations with High Achievers book, I did 15 book signings in Barnes & Noble prior to COVID. I went to some of the same stores twice, but it's a great way to get your name out there. And the manager of the store will buy some copies of your book and they'll have the book on sale and you can sign the book for them. And then they just run over to the register and they buy your book. Now, every once in a while, I'll have someone who brings their book to the store that they already bought and they'll just have me sign it right there, which is fine. But book signings can be really, really fun. In fact, I had a guest on my radio show one time. He called himself the Cowboy Philosopher. And he talked to me about a book that he had written and he did a book signing while sitting on top of a horse. It's unusual. It's also on brand, which makes it very, very memorable. If your book is about something based on creativity or requires creativity. Maybe you can do your book signing at an art gallery. These are just ideas that I'm spitballing here, but you can do book signings in very creative places. So what revenue streams are available to you once you've written your book? Because I know that if you write a book, you'd like to make some money out of it somehow. I've addressed a few of these speaking on stage because you're perceived as an authority. Now you have something to sell on stage. You can sell your book on stage and offer to sign the book at the back of the room when you're done. Sometimes you can get the event planner to buy a copy of the book for everybody in the room. And then you can just do a book signing when it's all done. Of course, you would offer that at a significantly discounted rate for the event planner. But that's a way to sell 100 or 200 books really fast if you want to do that. In fact, I did a, a speech at a high school, actually at a couple of different high schools. When I did a student leadership book, a couple of local high schools invited me to speak and I sold copies. One of the schools bought the copies outright and they read the book in class before I came to speak. And then when I did the book signing, I was absolutely blown away that some of them had highlighted in the margins or made notes and they asked me about stuff that I had written about. It was really cool. And then the other school didn't have a budget. And so I asked a local Chick-fil-A and a local Walmart if they would sponsor copies of the book for the school that was nearby. And they did. So I got to make a little bit of money doing that. Creating masterminds around your topic can be a great thing too, because you can charge per month for people to be a part of this group. And then every week or every month or however often you meet, you'll have a guest speaker about your topic. That's a great idea. You can host live events, which I've already talked about. You can create a coaching program. You can create a course. You can do webinars. You can have people sponsor your book or your event you can create a podcast. So there are a lot of different ways that you can repurpose and monetize your book. I've given you some ideas about where to start and I'm ready to take questions anytime you would like me to. Um, I had thrown a question out there. I, um, I guess this is Valerie. I know I had, I had started a book and I, I find that when I started doing content or writing things. I get more into like a factual or teaching mode, not mm -hmm. a connection mode. I don't know. That might be like, I don't know. It's a, a, just helper guidance on how to like keep it simple English, I guess. And then yeah. make it relatable or. Yeah. Yeah. Sense. Sometimes what you can do is you've got if you've got a draft of a, book, of a book written, you can show it to someone you trust and say, does this make sense? Or you can ask, what am I missing? What should I talk about that I haven't talked about yet? That can help. Or have you written this in a way that is easily understood? But I think uh, that that's a good question. I think if your book is a how-to book, you do want to do some teaching a little bit. 
Now, I mean, you can share all the pointers you want, but will someone actually do something with it? That's that's the whole idea. And also you can share how to do something like just say, for example, I mean, how to set up a Shopify store. I don't have any idea how to do that, but there are people who have written that. And if I want to read a book about how to do a Shopify store, I might read it and say, ah, I, I don't even want to deal with this. I'll just hire someone to do it for me. That's what you might get out of your book after you've written it. You might create awareness for your topic. You've shared how to do it but they're still not going to do it by themselves anyway, because they don't have time. They don't have expertise. They would rather spend the money than spend the time learning it because we're all busy. We're operating our core businesses. And I think what happens is when you get shiny object syndrome in our business and you think, Oh, I got to learn this. I got to learn this. I got to learn this. No, you do not have to be the one to learn that. You can hire someone who already knows how to do that. So I, I think it's okay to teach and obviously you want to make a connection. Telling stories is certainly a way to make that connection. So I would probably tell relatable stories about your topic. And I think that'll help. Awesome. Thank you. So Brian, I, I have a video course that if I want to take that video course and give it to somebody and say, can you create a book out of it? What do you recommend? Yeah, I did that with one of my, my, my client who did the book on how to connect with people on LinkedIn and generate leads. We created a book out of his course. He gave me access to his course and it was a video based course. So the challenge was how do I explain it in such a way that you don't have to watch the video? That was a fun challenge, but we did it. But yes, if you have a media course, you can absolutely turn that into a book. Now the course is something you can charge a lot more money for, but if you have the book that creates a lower dollar value entry point for someone who's brand new to you and they may want to buy your course after reading the book. So yes, I think that's a great idea. If you've got a course already, turn that into a book. I mean, is that a, is that a is that a resource out there? Like, do you go to like a you know ghostwriter to do that, or because these are technical subjects as well, right? Commercial you estate. Is, you hire Brian to do it. Yeah, I. You know, do. I don't know. I don't know if there's a book out there that talks about how to create your or how to create a book out of a course. I'm not aware of a resource like that. He just hired me because he knows that this is what I help people do. Brian helped me write two chapters in two different books, which became best-selling author, best-selling books on Amazon internationally, whatever. And unfortunately, the the publisher has since passed away, so the book series is done. Uh, but it was a collaborative book as well, um, and that's what got me out there for the nervousness of, like you said, what do I do to create my own complete book which i have yet to do and it still got me out there and it's in uh i think it's considered one of the largest books ever produced on entrepreneurial success so that is a resume talking point even though it's not my whole book um you do seem as the um like you said the uh authority potentially to those people and a lot of we talked about this with brian's a lot of the um speakers get gigs and give away their book and or like joseph you could take your course and dumb it down to a book size and then they they get the the teaser in the book and then the upsell is the course right or coaching or whatever you don't give all the way all the secrets of the book right uh, kind of um because it's just you know 20 bucks for 20 or 35 or whatever it is for a book is way too cheap for all the secrets go so so called um but that's just an idea but brian helped me a couple years ago now uh do my two yeah um, a couple years, two, three years yeah. ago, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that worked out really well. So how do you get it actually published? Is that, is that a, you know, is there some resource you just go and say, I'm, I have a book, I need help with publishing or how does that process work? I source out the formatting because I, that's not, that's not my zone of genius, but there are lots of people who know how to format books that are suitable for publishing on Amazon. So I source that out and I also source out, actually my, my assistant does that too. I've given some of those projects to her. She also uh, loves graphic design. So she'll create book covers for me. I also have sourced that out to other people. And then when it comes down to actually putting on Amazon, I source that out to get someone else because I, I just don't have time. I don't, I don't really want to learn that because I'm busy doing stuff that pays me a lot more than the, value of the time it would take to the, 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 the value on my time is much higher when I'm doing what I do best than it is when I'm loading a book onto Amazon. I'll pay gladly pay someone who does that all day long. Brian, Lydia had a couple of quick questions. Um, 
One is once you write the book, you kind of talk about that. How do you get it out there printed and or published and or associated costs involved? And this one's kind of a backup to that. Does a printing company publish the print it and send you thousands of copies, which I can answer that as no, in my can, in case, but um, can you touch on those two points of getting yeah. it out there, associated costs and, um, and I think Amazon, like you said, or a lot of them do print on demand. So it's, they're not, yeah. it's, we're not responsible for thousands of copies of, of right. household. Right. Amazon will do print on demand. So once it's loaded on there, if someone buys the book, you don't have to touch it. They will print it. They will ship it for you. And out of your royalties, they will subtract their cost for printing and shipping, but you'll still get a royalty. So for example, if I'm charging $14.95 for my book, every time someone buys it, I might get, let's just say $6.43. Because Amazon takes their profit. They also subtract for the cost of printing. They also subtract for the cost of, of shipping. And they're such a massive company. They, they have resources. So they're printing books all day long. Now, when your book gets published, they will print a few in anticipation that the book is going to do pretty well. I don't know how many they they print. I don't know if they print 25 or 50 or 100. I have no idea. But they'll print a few so that they're just ready to ship immediately upon publication. Now, it's free to load a book onto Amazon if you're doing it yourself. You can spend, gosh, I mean, I've seen companies charge you know a couple thousand dollars for for that and when people hire me for publishing if i'm uh d getting the book covers design if i'm getting it formatted if i'm getting it uh onto amazon that might be a package i might charge let's just say um, anywhere between two and three thousand dollars depending on how big the book is i mean it's the cost associated with printing an 80 page book are a lot different than the cost associated with a 300 page book right so that would be on a case-by-case -case basis you can go on to fiverr and you can find someone that'll just do it on a one-off basis for less than that. But if you've not worked with that person before, it's a little bit of a crapshoot. Fiverr and Upwork are a little bit of a crapshoot because you want to find someone that you trust. And when you find someone you like, you can keep working with that person. And then uh, Robert asked, is there a list of general purpose ghost authors, writers available? Um, and I would say you can hire Brian as a ghost writer. I, I would you think. can hire me. Yeah. You can hire me and that's where I'm leaving it. <laughs> so what, in my experience was he interviewed me because I had ideas. Oh, you muted yourself, Ryan. I, I didn't touch it. So I don't have oh, a way to sorry. put stuff on, on paper. To me, I'm the idea and talker. So Brian worked with me to interview me in a sense of, okay, pulling the information out of me and then how to format it and put it on paper that it made sense, right? Yep. Uh, and then we did that for, like I said, two different occasions on two different chapters. So it worked out pretty well. Um, and what I did is I went, um, and even though it wasn't my book, I so I bought them off of Amazon as a whole book. And I think I bought 10 or 20 books. And where when I went to different events, people wanted a book. Hey, what about this? So when, instead of going to go buy it on Amazon, because they're gonna, it that doesn't make a difference. I was able to sign it for them. And I was able to just recoup my money uh, on break even. I wasn't trying to overcharge people on a, on a book that I paid this was 40 bucks and it was. Um, so, hey, here's a book. Sometimes they give me 50, whatever, and here's a signed autograph. And then you, you use that to take pictures with people that you're signing your, your book with and use that as publications. I haven't done that very well. I do have it, but I haven't promoted it very well. So those are all ways to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and Brian is that resource to help you uh, yeah. pull the information out of you, put it, put it that way. For me, it was anyway. So one thing I've noticed is a lot of coaches and pretty much everybody in different industries that are, you know, coaches, trainers, consultants, they will offer a book for free, right? And you, they tell you, okay, just pay for shipping and handling. So Brian, I think that is the $14 minus the $6 looks like they're not taking a profit. They're just paying for Amazon shipping costs, right? Right, exactly. And that's, and that usually happens because they have a much higher level offer they want to make after the book. So they do that. In fact, sometimes, you know, they say they take a loss and maybe they actually do. But if you are paying, like just say $7.95 free plus shipping, that's probably about how much it's going to cost them to print and ship the book to you anyway. Right. Uh, but then there's usually an offer in the book that they want you to take advantage of, whether it's a coaching program, whether it's a course, whether it's a mastermind program they want you to be a, a part of, or maybe an event they want you to go to. There's something that they're going to be charging quite a bit more money for later 
And that's their whole premise behind it. And there's nothing wrong with it because then that's one way to build your business. And some people will only buy the book and they're fine. There are, they know that a certain percentage of those people will want to study with them even more. And how do I do that? Because people will buy the the new book from someone if the book is about something they really, really want to know more about. And like I mentioned before, I want you to customize this to me. So yes, I'll pay you to do it for me or to coach me through it like in person or virtually like this one-on-one. -on -one. So it's totally worth it for that person to do a free plus shipping offer. Right. On the same note, how does it work? And I've seen people, in fact, I got one the other day is a lot of people have gone to digital downloads. I have a fanatic for collecting books that I don't read because I like covers and touching, feeling and highlighting. Mm -hmm. Um, challenge with pdfs i've got two of them in the last week i haven't read yet and even open them because they're just pdfs it's like this mm -hmm. it's there but it's it's not it doesn't feel like there's value to me when you get a right. download of pdf they're just data collecting your information yeah to further than upsell you something is there a way to spin that where uh there's can be additional value gained or that you feel like you're getting more value as a consumer on a pdf version so you're asking, you're asking how to create more value out of the book? No, once you've created the book, you can mm -hmm. either print it on Amazon or you can give it to people in a PDF format, like you just right. talked about as far as the, the typically some sort of an upsell. Um, I just, just curious. So having both options, Brian, because if you want a physical book, you can buy the physical book or you can download an ebook. It depends on the yeah. person marketing. As an example, the person I know said, hey, here's my new book. I don't think it's online on Amazon. She said, here is it. And she said, get a free copy. And I said, hey, I have a signed one since I know you. And she just sent me a PDF. So I was a little let, let down on my side. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a good idea to make the option for people. Because I, I ask people sometimes, and I've, I do have a free Facebook group called Authorpreneur Live. I'd be very happy and grateful for anybody here who wants to join it, Authorpreneur Live. It's a it's a Who's private group, of? but I'll I'll accept you. And maybe Brian, you're in the group, aren't you? Yeah, put a link yeah. in the chat where you can put a maybe a code to where um, it's a SIBA. So somebody was on this call, so it's not open to the general public. Um, that if it's on this call, that you can add get access to your Facebook group. So you know who we are. Okay, I've got the the link right here. So oops, I need to change this. So I'm messaging everybody. I appreciate that, Brian. That's awesome, right? Because there's a lot of questions coming in about like publishing and the back end of everything. Um, but I still, I know there's a lot of people here who still just are on the idea uh, side of things. So what is, um, what's your thoughts on one, what's the best size of a book to start on? Um, if someone's kind of just starting out or just kind of has like one niche yeah. idea or, and, um, how to kind of get out of overwhelm, you know, you might yeah. have like some bold topics or something like that, but how to really like get to the point of sitting down and filling yeah. it out. I, I think if you've got 25,000 words, that's going to be at least a hundred pages. It'll be probably in the range of a hundred to 125 ish pages. And that's a good, that's a good length book. I call that an airplane book. It's something that you can read on a two hour flight and be done with it. Oh, that's really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Because not everyone's going to want to read a 400 page book. Right. Because most people who buy a book don't read it or they don't finish it. In fact, it's astonishing to me how many people after high school who have never read a book at all. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think Brian, Brian, what about like a workbook? You know, so we're talking about traditional books, but what if it's just a how to workbook? Right. You know, you have, you know, Workbooks can be a good companion guide to your actual book. Oh, great idea. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. In fact, you can even, in fact, this very same client who did the LinkedIn book, he released a workbook after that. On, okay. if you're yeah, no, that's a great idea. I think that a great for a companion. A quick reference, I think, Brian, to help get those of us that are commercial real estate, if you're doing a how to book, whether whatever it is, I noticed that a friend of mine, um, uh, Joe, you have his book, Chuck Suttle, and you have yeah. 100, 106 pages, give or take, of a book, right? And then you have, you know, 15 to 20 pages of resources and or uh, what's the appendix or something like that, whatever you call the glossary. So there's 
and it's got a, a good enough weight to it to where it feels like it's worth spending 10 or 15 bucks on, but it's not your your napkin book that's, you know, oh, I wrote my ebook and I'm charging you $20 for it. And it's 12 pages, right? So, right. And then it's also not a, it's not a, um, it's not a two or 300 page Trump book that's got hardcover, a uh, slip cover like they did, you know, in-, in Yeah, I'm technology. holding it up for everybody's reference. It. So if you can see what I'm holding, it's a very small book. Uh, they don't. They don't have page numbers in here, <laughs> so I think they they forgot yeah, to put page numbers. Yeah, like Brian said, it's easy to read on an airport on an airplane trip for two hours. Yeah. Now, <laughs> now, if you're normally if you're publishing on Amazon, there's a there's a KDP. It's a Kindle Direct Publishing. So just search for KDP, and you would log in with your Amazon login to create your KDP account, and you can load the book onto Amazon yourself. And when you are getting your book formatted, it will ask, "Are is this a physical version or or an e a Kindle version, an ebook version?" The formatting is going to be different. So whoever is whoever is formatting your book for you, specify that you want both the print version and the the e version suitable to be loaded onto Amazon. Because the ebook, for example, you're not going to have the page numbers because you're just clicking and scrolling and they will probably make the table of contents clickable. So if you want to go to chapter three, you can just click on the link. It'll just zoom you right to chapter three so that you don't have to flip, 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 flip. So the formatting is different for an ebook than it is for a print version. So be sure to specify that to whoever is doing that for you. And Amazon does have quite a few tutorials. I mean, in fact, if you're on their their Q and A page, they can do that, or they, that you can you can look up the answers to those questions. Um, one good question was if you bring in someone else to help you write the book and or like a ghostwriter, do you do you say that anywhere? Because I mean, I don't know if you want to say that you are the author, um, or how how do they add that in? I, as a ghostwriter, you remain anonymous. And so most of the time you don't know. But sometimes what people will do, like when Jack Canfield did his book, The Success Principles, he it was by Jack Canfield with Janet Schweitzer. So you know that she helped him. Maybe as her editor, maybe as a ghostwriter. I don't know what capacity she worked with him. You in, say but, but you can you can do that you can say with so and so now you know some people don't want it known that their book was written by a ghostwriter i i don't really care if i get the credit or not now what i what sometimes people will do in the acknowledgments is they might say thanks to brian k right for helping me put this together and so then they know but otherwise i'm completely anonymous so you can acknowledge that person in the in the section where you're thanking people for your journey that's where you can let people know. Awesome. I think uh, we've kind of gone through quite a few questions. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Brian, do you help people to design book covers? Or yeah, I have I I have people that you might like my assistant, for example, who loves graphic design. What happens is I will say, here's the title, here's the idea of the book come up with some ideas and so she'll give me a bunch of options some you'll like some you won't but i'll show all of them to you and you tell me what you like and how can we mix and match and it's not done until you're happy so you're basically sometimes, sometimes i'll have sometimes i'll hire someone else on a on a project basis to come up with some covers too and so yeah you'll want to get more than one option in so fact i i had one client who uh, was very unhappy with his first version. And the designer came back to me and said, you didn't really give me any ideas to start with. I said, that's fair. And so I went back to my client. I said, do you have any idea what you might want this to look like? And the book was about, you know, time passing. So do what you're going to do. It's time's going to pass whether you do it anyway. And the idea the designer ultimately came up with was an upside down hourglass where the sands of time were almost done. And the client loved it. Cool. So you're basically a one-stop shop. How do people get yeah. involved with you? Um, uh, Joseph and, and Valerie, you guys can send out Brian's contact information and or a link. For yeah, that. when we send the, uh, Brian, that's why we send you the questionnaire. So we have all the all your information and uh, we will send that out with the replay 
And when your video is published on our portal, we can, you know, everybody can find your information there as well. Yep. That's my site. And you've, I've given all this information, but yeah, I'm just, you know, have so. Nisha will take care of it. Call with Brian.com. Yep. That's my calendar. Call with Brian.com. So you can get on my calendar and I'll talk to you for a few minutes and we can discuss your project and how I might be able to help you out. He's there... very responsive, right? This is how I got in touch with you, Brian. So, I, yes, I am... if you want to reach out to him, yeah, he's a fantastic way to reply. So, awesome. is there a, uh... thank you so much, Brian, for being here. And, you know, this was great information. You're welcome. Brian, okay. one last question. Is yes. there a range? I know what I spent. Is there a range for people from expectations from a help me write an essay to help me write a book um, for your involvement? Yeah. If, if I'm, and again, I, I, I give a blind quote without talking to you about your project, but if I am doing it for you, it's usually going to be in the range of 10,000. And that's actually pretty normal. I'm not writing your term paper. Some people say, Oh God, that's a lot of money. Well, it is, but there's, there's one group I talked to that was close to 30 grand. So yeah. yeah. I mean, there are people that charge a lot more than I do. In fact, I'm thinking about raising my rates eventually, but I would want to add some extra things to it too. But 10 is where I'm starting right now. And so I can certainly do that for you. And this from start to finish from conversation to mm -hmm. completed book, right? Yep. Cool. Thank you very much for your team. I really appreciate being a guest. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And thank you for answering all the questions and everything. I know that, um, you know, when we learn sometimes, you know, it's like we're processing it, being taken it all in and stuff. And so it's fantastic to have the opportunity to then be able to ask questions and get some clarity and stuff. So I really appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. um, this was fantastic. And I know you have your podcasts after this. Yep. So um, if anyone wants to listen to more of what Brian has to say, he has his podcast coming up at 11. Yeah, I'm taping it, so it's not going to air live. But if anyone okay. doesn't listen to my I show, can. it's called Success Profiles Radio. You can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere. Success Profiles Radio, I've been doing it for over 12 years, so it's it's my happy place. Can you I, and wait, I like your last name, too. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Brian just said, go ahead and put the link of your podcast in there. And while you're doing that, we'll have Nisha go ahead and set up our rooms. We do have 10 more minutes. So very excited. Um, and uh, yeah, Brian, we'd love to have you back anytime. Um, and any questions, everybody, just go ahead and reach out to us, the Facebook page, or reach out to Brian. And we'd love to keep uh, keep sharing that with you guys. Quick question, yes. Brian. Yes. Is, that, is your podcast going to be on YouTube? <clears throat> Uh, it is not on YouTube, but it is everywhere else since it's radio. So it's not a video based show at all. Okay. It is. It, I do normally do my show Mondays at six Eastern for an hour with commercial breaks. But sometimes when a guest is really, really busy, I do agree to record in advance. That may, that way I don't have to do it on Monday. <laughs> How can we easily find it and, and listen to you? <clears throat> Yeah, I, I just put the link in the chat. Okay, I look good. Thank you. Thanks. All right. All right. I look forward it. to having conversations with all of you again. Yes, thank you thank so you, much, Brian. Brian. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.